this is my great pleasure to be here to give you uh, my presentation. Uh, I'm talking about myself tonight, myself. So um, talking about the leadership, talking about the management. But I hope uh, my presentation is going to be valuable for each of you. So before starting my presentation, please understand the, there is no right or wrong answer to any of the questions. Just I try to share my view of my career and what is going to happen to the company which I just try to assume the president and CEO. Uh, and I like to talk also about my future plan as a CEO of the company. So the, uh, this company, Jatoko Limited, is uh, number one uh, manufacturer of CBT, con continuously variable transmission, uh, which is going to be a growing business, uh, even globally. And uh, this company is located in uh, Fuji city of Shizuoka prefecture. And uh, uh, turnover-wise, it is 600 billion Japanese yen uh, this year around. And uh, our employees, number of the employees is uh, 10,000 globally. And it's going to be 12,000 uh, even in a, in a year or so. Shareholders, 75% owned by Nissan Motor and 15% and by Mitsubishi Motor and 10% by Suzuki. So this is a joint venture company, not listed company and consolidated company with a Nissan Motor lead. So, what happened to me? What happened to me? Uh, you know, I'm talking about myself. Two years ago, I was a, uh, uh, as Brian said, I was a leader of Sabic Japan, which is a Saudi Arabian-based uh, petrochemical industry. Actually, I, I was very happy to be uh, uh, president of Sabic. Uh, then, all of a sudden, just two years ago, some, some day in December, my phone rang. And I pick up. I say, hey. I said, this is Nista, Nissan Motors. Is this Mr. Hata? I said, of course, I thought this is going to be a big complaint about the plastic which I was selling to Nissan. Or I tried to increase the price of the plastic to Nissan. Maybe uh, Nissan Motor or purchasing department of Nissan Motor is going to kill me. Uh, by, by the way, it happens all the time for the plastic industry, which uh, Sakiguchi-san knows everywhere. So, uh, I thought so, actually, I thought so. However, uh, they say, they say, uh, this is Nissan Motors, Mr. Carlos would like to see me, see, see you, Mr. Hatton. Now, of course, I didn't understand what happened, of course. This is a true story, by the way, I didn't make up anything. So. So it, it sounded like they are looking for a person who ran an independent business, uh, namely Jatoko. And I'm, okay, uh, I, I, if Mr. Gong would like to see me, I'd like to see him. I, I, I saw him, I saw him, and he said the same thing. And I, of course I thought it is a big trap. If this is a big company, great company, uh, profitable business, growing business, how can they or each of the person who is working for Nissan already uh, to be a, become a president of, uh, of, of Jetoko? Why do we need a person outside of Nissan? I didn't understand. And I thought it's a big trap. Right? You didn't think so? So then, of course, I met him, Mr. Gong. I was, I was just waiting. In, 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 in his big, um, it's not the conference room, it's, it's a big room with a big sofa. And I was waiting alone. And he came alone. And he said to me, Hey, Mr. Hata, we were talking about you. You know, this is another trick. If you like to pick up a person, you have to grab his, his or her heart. We are talking about you. This, well, I, I am sure he, they didn't talk about me. <laughs> but this is a great start to, to draw the attention of anybody who likes to see Mr. Gong. 
So Mr. Gong with a lot of aura, and he said to me in this way, Anaheim, okay. And he just started to talk about why he needs a person outside of Nissan Group to run this company. Now, of course, everything it was a good thing. You know, international, global, and we need a person who doesn't be contaminated <laughs> with the culture of Nissan. He said so. Okay, everything is good. So now I started to believe this is a big trap. <laughs> don't, don't get it. Because this should be a big trap. But the, 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 at the end of the 30 minutes discussion, Mr. Gon was very actually attractive. And I finally he just tried to shake, uh, shake my hand. And I just tried to, of course, take my hand. So, of course, this shows some uh, sign. Uh, although I didn't say yes, but I just physically said yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, hap it happens. So this is a company. But seriously, seriously, why I, I said yes? Why I said yes? Because before I came to this company, I was actually trained, and I was, as, as Brian said, I, I had many uh, positions. Uh, I passed many positions, and I learned a lot. And at that time, as a leader of SABIC, I decided um, the core of my career is to be a people's manager rather than salary hunter. You know, still, uh, don't get me wrong, I still like money. <laughs> I still like money. You know, if, if the pay is higher, I, I'm, I'm more happy, of course. But once again, ultimately, what would you like me to do? Or, what is your career goal? What is the ultimate goal of your career? My answer was, and still is, people's manager. And if it is the bigger company than today's company, which was Savic, it's around 200 people, now 10,000 people, we should take it. I should take it, because I got the offer. So that, that, was, that was my answer. I internally, even after I shook hands, of, of Mr. Gon's hands, but I, I, I decided to come. I thought this is a leadership test. And this, this position as a leader of Zetoko, everything I have experienced and I still have now are to be tested. So let me explain myself. What is my career? What is my background? Be with me. This is, of course, I know it's a busy page. Um, uh, this is my, uh, my uh, career history. I started my professional career with a Japanese trading company, namely Nisho UI, which no longer exists. <laughs> and I, very first day of this trading company, I started uh, to handle of the plastic. So, 30 some years ago, I started my career with a plastic trading, trader. Then, luckily, I, I, I was pick, picked up by one of the MBA uh, education uh, program by Nisho UI. I still thanks to them, I appreciate, and I went to the Northwestern. I got an MBA, marketing major. And then after that, I spent uh, six years, five and a half years in Dusseldorf, Germany, and then coming back to Japan, and then went to uh, Indonesia. Indonesia was a great day. I, I, I love these days. I learned a lot. And actually, it is uh, it's a big business. Uh, we, we dream <laughs> a big business. Joint venture with uh, Siam Cement, Itochu, and the local uh, capital. Uh, together with Hoshino-san, I spent uh, very good days. I learned a lot, actually. However, the time was bad. Time was bad in Indonesia. 1998, there was a riot and uh, currency crisis, uh, economy down. Uh, so, uh, from the business point of view, the project was actually collapsed. But even corruption, or even breaking down, as a vice president of the company, I actually learned a lot because I need to uh, fire 
around 400 people, which already hired, but no more money and no more projects. And, and I, I had a big discussion with the government and gov banks, which I never expected. But this, this experience actually was a good. Now, at that time I didn't enjoy, of course, but, but it was a good, good experience to me. After that, I was asked by Nisho Yuai to return back to Japan. And I thought it is a, it is a way because Nisho Yuai sponsored me a lot. I still thanks to them. However, phone ran. My phone ran at the time too. And this is GE. Are you interested in working for us? I said, before even thinking about that, I said yes. <laughs> Actually, at that time, GE had the plastic division. And they are looking for a person who is experienced overseas of the plastic business. So it looks like me. And I, of course, shook hands, <laughs> took this job, and sorry, said sorry to Nisho Iwai. Um, I started my career in GE, year 2000, which is actually a good uh, next career. Or I actually learned a lot in GE days. I enjoyed I went to China, Hong Kong, and I, and, and I in my last career in GE was a leader of GE Plastic Japan. But exact day, year 2007, GE decided to sell the plastic division. Now, I was also a part of the deal. GE sold the plastic division, including myself. <laughs> and I was sold. And I automatically almost uh, became uh, a Japanese leader of Sabi. Another good experience. I didn't choose this time. My phone didn't rang. <laughs> but, but of course, I enjoy be a part of a SAVIC, which is a different culture, but very strong company for the petrochemical business. I enjoy it. Then, finally, what happened in year 2010, I already explained. Looking back, I spent the GE days, and I actually start my career in Japan and went to China, and then coming back to Japan. Now I clearly understood the GE intention. GE thought this China line, red line, is a GDP. And the blue, uh, yes, blue line is a Japan GDP. This is exactly the time of everybody should expect the GDP of China will exceed Japan. So each industry should look for the China more seriously. I was selected as a leader of China, which was a good luck. And I learned a lot. And also, I like to explain why GE decided to sell the petrochemical business, which is showing this green line is a crude oil price. GE is a great company, but doesn't have any connection or a good relationship with the crude oil, like Exxon, like Dow, like Bayer. So GE almost looks like they knew that the crude oil price is skyrocketed or very fluctuated. So this is not a good part of the company as GE. Which, and, and selling to Sabic is a very logical conclusion, which I now agree. If you ask me, uh, one person who is most ex uh, influenced to me in GE days, uh, there are many good leaders, good people, but I like to say this is Dale Connolly. He is a long time HR human relations leader working for Jack Welch. And I actually had a very good chance to talk very intimately, closely, personally with him three times. And this is he. He encouraged me to go to Sabic together with the team. And I was so encouraged by him. So people talking about GE is a good execution com uh, company, or a good number company, and boom boom company. It is, actually, yes. However, flip side of the coin, GE has a very good human touch, 
And he is a typical GE person in my eyes. GE taught me many things, like a leadership for E, which, of course, many of you have already known. Energy. Leader should have energy. Energy doesn't necessarily mean a loud voice or jumping or dancing or, you know, punching. It's not the energy. Energy is uh, actually a passion to the position and a passion to the professionalism. And next E is energize. The leader should influence to the team or subordinates or even the boss to get their level of the energy high. Influence, push. This is another very important aspect of leader, which is second E. And third E is edge. The leader should do sometimes the very tough thing. Don't avoid, don't escape. If this is the right thing to do, you have to do, the, do, do this thing. This is edge. And final E is execute. If you have a target, if you have a number, you have to do, execute. So these four E, they repeatedly in GE teach to everybody working for GE. And this is a powerful statement, which I'd like to share with all of you tonight in this room. Anytime you may be lost or you think about your leadership, remember this 4E, which should be always variable. Let me just illustrate about the management and the leadership. People are sometimes confused about the definition of the management and leadership. In my definition, leadership is a bigger and louder or broader definition than management. What is the difference? What is the difference? My answer is energy edge execute is a mutual value for both management and leadership. However, energize. If you can energize the team, you are more than the management. You are the more than the manager. You are now a leader. This is my definition of this 4E. Now, this was me. I was fully equipped, I thought. And I shook hands with Mr. Gong. I took this, this, this chance to be a president of Jatoko, which I never know what is this. So I, I, I knew that a little, a little bit, but I, of course I have to learn more. First couple of months, I of course very carefully looked what is this company for and what is this company. And this is the one piece of paper I wrote after a, a, a month or so. This is a great company in a, in a sense of the technical advantage and world number one manufacturer of CBT, which is a growing business. And also, uh, employee has a good quality. They, they are very well trained and very motivated, actually. And power of execute. They, they are very good at execution. And finally, customer. There are lots of great customers. Nissan, Chrysler, General Motors, Suzuki, Mitsubishi. These are the first class customers. So nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. There's no trap. <laughs> There's no trap. However, I found a few weaknesses. So one of the weaknesses is uh, lack of name. The people working for the auto industry or part industry knows Jatoko very well. However, outside of this industry, nobody knows Jatoko. Maybe my, my mother didn't know that. <laughs> or your relative didn't know that. So lack of name. And also recognition, which is related with their um, confidence. I like, I, I like to let them be more confident about their position. And also lack of independency and confidence. Independency, 75% owned by one company, which is very powerful Nissan. And Nissan is powerful enough to control Jatoko, as they just try to tend to handle a part of Nissan. 
Actually, it is not. The clear message of the Nissan is this is why Nissan invites the outside a leader to run this company. So me, myself, is a, already a good message to the workers, employees, and even for the executives of Jadogo. So independency and confidence is a challenge point, which I like to do. Once again, I, I, I talked about the customer. And this is a great customer. And, and every car you can even see outside of this, this, this building might have this CVT. So once again, don't worry about the customer. Don't worry about, uh, about the quality of the customer, which is a great thing as a, as a management of the company. To be a confident, what is missing for them? I really like to let them have a clear message and clear target. 600 billion turnover. And try to make a 1 trillion turnover in six years, seven years actually, in the year 2018, one trillion yen company. People ask me why. Don't ask me why. You need a target. You can do that. Don't ask me why. Because this is a great company, great target, and great customer base, great future. Why can't you do that? One trillion. So, so many people, you know, most of the engineers with Jatoko is very, very serious. Hata-san, why one trillion? Why, why not 980 billion? <laughs> I said, forget it. One trillion is one trillion. This is a target we have to aim. Of course, if we do the same job, same business, same customer, same model, we cannot reach this one. This is a clear message that you need to do many new things. And the way you execute, you need a different way to do it. One trillion, to be very honest, I really don't care about the one trillion. I really like to let them understand they can grow and they can actually utilize the very good circumstance of this company, try to reach to grow. And one trillion is a great target as a message. That's what I did. So we spent six months uh, last year to this year to draw this line. So what is the production in Japan? What is the production outside of Japan? What is the customer? What is the area we can grow? Every, every story are behind of this number. I, I told you, this company of the execution power is great. You know, the amateur president just came and say one trillion, and then they just try to make a numbers. <laughs> and they just could try to make a great story. And then they started to believe themselves. They can do that. Of course, I don't believe that yet, but we have to do. So this is a one trillion yen uh, target uh, roadmap. Clear message is today, year, physical year 12, 2012, our production of Japan is 80%, and only 20% is producing in outside of Japan. This blue, blue area is Japan production. Clear, but sometimes this is a tough message is Japanese production will decrease. We have to relook and seriously reconsider about Japan. We need to manage Japan. But on the other hand, outside of Japan production is skyrocketing. That is our plan and that we have to do. In Japan case, I need to use my edge to do this. And outside of Japan, we need a lot of change because it's so Japanese oriented, so Japanese concentrated mindset company. We have to make a lot of change. Now, my adventure starts. <laughs> Actually, story has been done. Target is getting clear. What should I do? I think 
one thing is missing is we have to communicate this message clearly. Firstly, each of these 10,000 employees. I'm sure this is only a few months after I became a president. And all of a sudden, this amateur came outside of this company and say something crazy. They, they believe so. <laughs> and then I started to communicate with them. This is achievable. And this is the target we should do. We have to do. Because this is a growing industry and we have to grow. So this communication is the next task which I faced. So I, I did many communication sessions. Like, uh, firstly, I did uh, uh, managers. Uh, of course, this, this type of communication, and I asked every manager a year ago uh, to give me an email about how do you feel. There are 700 emails. Actually, yes, there are 700 managers. And I, I said, I promise you, I will reply everything. Uh, you know, I should have said so. <laughs> I shouldn't have said so because 700 email in a day. And I, of course, I, I did. I did. Actually, I did. But this was a great way to start with. However, it's only a 700 out of 10,000. The message was why we should do this. You know the transmission industry, of course, because none of you knows transmission so, so well. However, the real point is two pedal. Automatic transmission, we call it a two pedal because only a two pedals in, in, in the foot, right? And three pedals means manual transmission. People are talking about for the emerging countries like India or Brazil or many other countries are coming uh, and the dri driver of the new era is the manual transmission because it's cheaper. And I agree. If it is cheaper, manual transmission is going to be a core of the drivers of these de developing countries. However, this is up to us, up to Jatoko. If Jatoko has an idea and solution of the product, which is very competitive to the manual transmission, we can create our own market by ourselves. This is the area we have to tackle. We have to challenge in order to reach one trillion yen. That was a message. Now I started my another adventure starts. I like to talk with every 10,000 people by this message. La this year, uh, April to May, I did the town hall meetings like this 23 times uh, in Japan and five, six times, I don't remember, uh, in outside of Japan to try to talk directly, face to face, and delivering this message. We can do that, we can do that. that that's what I did. However, it's only 30% of the total population because 70% of the total population of our company is the people who are working in the lines. And they cannot just simply come to the meeting room to listen to me because they have to work uh, physically, be a part of the operation. But only a time to see them is uh, only uh, 30 minutes, uh, one time in a month. They have a morning meeting and so on and so forth. I try to be and try to deliver the message. Of course, it's a short period of time, but I like to do it. I did. So that was only a thing, uh, but I, ha I have to repeat. And uh, more of the communication, there, there are more communication way like uh, Mm, internal magazine, or of course, uh, portal, uh, which is a web-based or inter intranet basis communication, which I do uh, frequently. Same message, same message, but more frequent. And people sometimes do not hear about the inter internal, or people do not hear about the, uh, about, uh, from the boss or discount what the boss is saying. Is that right, Sekiri-san? <laughs> he used to work for me, by the way, in GE. Uh, so let's try to use the outside media. <laughs> outside media. So 
having a great support of the public relations team, I like to expose for to the media or newspaper or TV as much as possible. And people sometimes believe the 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 outside media saying, and then say, "Hi, ah, finally, Mr. Hata is saying like that." Oh, now I believe. So I try to use the power of the media. And my career also sometimes attracts some of the media, many outside of the industry or GE career and everything. I, I try to utilize it just simply because for the Jatoko's employee. Not only in Japan. Jaco, uh, as I said, Jatoko has a uh, uh, lot of presence in the outside of uh, Japan market. So I also use uh, many of the outside uh, global or overseas media, and I, which, which I, I like to keep uh, doing so. Now, external. Also, Jatoko is very shy, has been very shy to talk about ourselves. And in order to uh, recruit or try to hire a new hire from the college or uh, even high school, we like to make more advertisement uh, to the outside, which, which actually happened first time in this year. Selected people like you, uh, always a training uh, in Jatoko is a selected base. And uh, we uh, try to reorganize about uh, uh, training. And if the people are chosen as a selected, as a future leader, every meeting and every uh, training session, I started with Hatajuku, which is my session like this. And I talk about my philosophy about the leadership. And I believe these selected people are actually driver of the change. And we call this is a change agent. And this is a, going to be a very powerful uh, driver and also co-worker for the Jatoko's growth. And this is the one case. Last year, these people are selected. And this is the course, uh, six months or five months of the course. But I gave them the homework very first time in the Hatajuku. You guys uh, are missing of Fuji headquarter office. We don't have any cafe like uh, Starbucks. You know, you never be in Fuji. If you like to be in Fuji headquarter and like to go to Starbucks, you have to drive 35 minutes to go to the downtown of Fuji and then get get one cup of coffee in Starbucks and get getting back. Of course, this Starbucks is already cold. So you need to have a cafe in Fuji headquarter. They say, they say, and, and many of the employees, hey, Hatasan, I like to have, we like to have a, a Starbucks in Fuji. Okay, okay. This is a great idea. You do this. But in order to do this, you have to present me about the budget and about the rationale. Why do you choose this vendor rather than Starbucks or rather than, I don't know, Excelsior or whatever? Why did you choose this? And what is the benefit? To Jatoko. This is a homework, and finally they did in six months' time. And next time you come and visit us, please, second floor of the headquarters, visit and uh, I think 200 yen cup of coffee. Okay. <gasps> Nadeshiko line, diversity. Also, we are very shy about the diversity. And this is another trial of the production line. We select a team. Many of the female to produce a smaller amount of the units, which are almost, sorry to say, dying business. However, if it is dying business, but it's also important for to keep the quality. What we did is that we just rebuilt a small line and use a more power assist because many of the uh, short workers and operators can lift the heavy things. And also, uh, we have some good steps in order to reach to the keep this one. Now, Nadeshiko line was successful because, not simply because 
this number of the female employees, but the quality improves a lot. This is a great proof of what we did, and the diversity really works. You know, we, we and I set the target, and we all already made a story. We set the target, and we communicate, and we create a consensus, but we didn't have done anything yet. Today, after one and a half year of my presidency, I have done many things as a communication, but we, I haven't achieved anything. We have just started. We have just started. So now, we need to have an execution stage. Me, as a GE alumni, I, am, I have been trained uh, by many of the Six Sigma uh, discussion. And Nissan Group has a very mild translation of Six Sigma education, which is VUP, they call, which is good. And also, Jatoko has a good culture of VUP. So we have to utilize VUP to face, uh, settle, or solve the immediate managerial challenges, which I started. And then we have a lot of discussion of the immediate managerial challenges like information leakage or 5S, which is we need to improve more. And uh, uh, also, as, as we said, we, we, we like to promote more names of Jatoko. How can we do corporate marketing? These are the area which we like to widely discuss. This is a new thing for this culture team contains from the top is our executives and from the 30, early 30s members and group are going to present to me either go or no go. That, that is a new way of the discussing to improve the Jatoko. Ultimately, I like to make this company as a school of the leadership. School of leadership, what does it mean? I like to make this company to be, uh, each of the employees are happy to be grow, happy to get the opportunity to grow. And this is a company to provide you, provide each of the employees a fair opportunity to grow. Because this is a growing company, very busy company. If you like to take a challenge, this is a place you can grow. However, if you don't like the take a challenge, or you just wait for the uh, taking the, any challenge, you will never be given any of the opportunity. This is a, we, I call, school of the leadership. Sometimes many people, many talented, many young, many good young people seconded from Nissan, which is good. And I, 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 I told them every time, congratulations, you are seconded to, to Jatoko from Nissan. Nissan is such a good company, but Nissan is too big for you to do the job. If you come ten, one tenth of the size of the company, your coverage is going to be 10 times more. Now, congratulations, you are part of Jatoko. Enjoy, grow, and contribute to our company. This is what I call school of leadership. Again, training. I like to enhance more training internal Jatoko and training a clear message that people are selected. As I said, the selected people are pure driver of the change of this company. In summary, what I did is after I met Mr. Go one and a half years ago, firstly I grasped the current condition and what is this company for? What is missing? What should we improve? What, what, what we should do? And then second step is a cultural revolution. I like to shake this company, try to go to that goal of one trillion. And meaning, Atajuku, diversity, and Six Sigma, which I just said, and town hall meetings for the communication, and action learning, like cafe thing. It's, it's everything looked new 
for them. However, everything are now connected to reach to one trillion yen target. Then I set this base, but for the execution of the real goal to reach to one trillion yen target. Our next step is autonomous growth. Not being said pro, uh, proactive or not just let every each of the employees in Jataco can be a leader. Leader is not be a leader because you are the manager of X group. You are the general manager, so that is why you are a leader. I don't agree with the definition of the leadership and management. If you are a leader, you just join Jatoko this year without any subordinate, you can be a leader because you start your job with among the many of the people. You can be a leader, this group. Everybody can be a leader. In this notion, autonomous growth is very important message we have to do. Without that, we cannot reach to one trillion yen target. In order to make this school of leadership, it's a theory which I like to drive more, and performance driven culture and evaluation. It is a must we have to put on this. These are the things I try to drive more and more. And next thing, you never know, because we still have X years <laughs> to reach to, to 2018. If you listen to me, sometimes next year, two years later, I will give you more update of what Jatogo is. OK? So that's all by my page. And finally, this is uh, for the recruit. Sorry, it is only Japanese. It doesn't mean anything to you, but it is saying that we are doing something big globally. OK, um, it's all by my pages. And I hope you enjoy. And please uh, ask any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Hata. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you. Before, say, proceeding into this uh, kind of a dialogue session, let me add on a little bit about what happened in, you know, say, you know, say, relation in the back. Uh, back in 1907, I guess, uh, we used to work for the same company that is called Nisho Y. It's already a long time, already a long time ago. Then uh, we were assigned at the same time to work for one, say, project. It's a kind of a construction project, uh, constructing the petrochemical plant in southern part, uh, east part of this uh, Indonesia, worth of 3.4 billion US dollars. Petrochemical plant, huge one, and that kind of a big project needs lots of work. So he was assigned as a vice president of the joint venture company. As he explained, we have some partners from uh, Sam Cement, uh, the Kochu, other say, local partners there. And I was working for a Jakarta office, and we collaborate with each other every day, almost every day. Every night. Every night. <laughs> <laughs> Coincident that we, that we live in the same apartment, apartment room, so at the building itself. Sorry, not the room. He has his own family. <laughs> I have my own family, so it's a different room. That's the part. And uh, back in 97, yes, right after we were assigned two stations there, uh, like I said, the currency time turmoil. I would say financial crisis took place at that time. And let me give you one example. The, the local currency in, in, in Indonesia was called Indonesian rupiah. Have you ever heard that? Rupiah. Rupiah was quoted about 1250 against one dollar, one two five zero for one dollar. Then after the financial crisis took place, like about say nine months, so next year, it was quoted about fifteen thousand. Can you imagine that? 15,000 rupee a par US dollar. That means, and in, in most cases, you have to pay roughly 12 times much more than you have paid in the past. In other words, it could be, say, explained as a hyperinflation variable. So the people need to 
to create so 10 times of money in order to buy same, say, a product in the past. So people got, say, frustrated and suffered economically, of course, and got angry. And they took some kind of violent, say, actions to a lot of things. However, the same, that's called the social unrest, I would say. But we have our families there. So we needed to protect our families, also protect the project itself, also protect our clients. So we, at the time, postponed or reviewed the whole project schedule. And we negotiated lots of agreements with lawyers or bankers, also the partners or engineering contractors, because that project was engaged in the constructing the plan, that of things. Then after finalizing that of things, we actually evacuated the country on a temporary basis and came back to it. So that's a kind of a history or a kind of experience we went through in the past. So the question is, what is the implication now? Of implication here is we are good friends. <laughs> so that's the point. Okay? So, really close. so we have survived that kind of a severe experience. So we I am really so really close to him. So I can ask whatever I want. So that's the first point I want to say. Okay. So my initial question is again, uh, why did you accept the job offer from Bonsi? You uh, in his explanation or presentation, he referred to the point and he said uh, you are really capable or not 100% confident, but you had certain level of asset confidence with regard to the people's management or organizing the people. Could you be specific a little bit more? How can you or what is crucial in organizing or say, making some uh, say, increase the level of the boundary of the people itself? So that's my first question. Very good question. Um, as I said, I was very happy be a leader of SABIC in Japan. And this is not me trying to raise a hand and look for a job. So, but at the time, Nissan wants me to lead this company, very big company. And I cannot be any of confident at all because I, I didn't know anything about this industry. And I cannot be confident, or I cannot be even be a, be a part of any, any kind of a sense of how I can lead this company. Very, very honest. But I met a couple of executives and finally I met Mr. Gong, as I said. Mr. Gong is a, is a person who has a lot of aura. I actually, when I saw him, before even talking with him, I may have decided, <laughs> ah, Mr. Gong, he, he has such, a, such kind of a attractive um, charisma. Actually, this, this is, this, of course, you know, you know, your question is a very logical question like a professor. He is a professor. <laughs> uh, my answer is very intuitive and illogical, I know that. But however, sometimes, what, sometimes ha things happen by illogical way. But, so this is, this is the one side of the coin. He, clearly explained in that meeting. And I just, of course, challenge. In, in Nissan, tens of thousands of the talented, qualified potential manager uh, are there. You can nominate any of them to put this company to lead. Why you don't do this and you offer me this job? You don't know anything about me, although you said you are talking about me. <laughs> I said so. Hata-san. I like to have a person who is not contaminated with the culture of Nissan, and, and also who has a lot of international sense to lead the company. I am sure you are qualified. Okay. <laughs> and of course, even after shook his hand, I forgot to talk about the salad. <laughs> But this is a true, true story. Nothing is logical. Sorry about that, Hoshino san. But this is the story. I have some doubt. I'm a little bit skeptical. So, <laughs> but having said that, however, having said that, however, still, I guess you are really, say, a logical guy. I know it <laughs> you know, for 17 years already. So my next question could be, uh, you have a business experience, a successful one in the past, especially, particularly, not only one, in the petrochemical field marketing, also managing company, and the GE, as well as Sabic, 
who's the successor of the Jimmy Plasma's company. So what type of, or what characteristics, or what skills can you still utilize a kind of a transfer in managing the company in totally different industry? What is common in terms of expertise could be? But, um, so could you be a little bit logical? Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> yes, this is a great question. You know, me taking this job, and of course I'm sure and everybody knows I'm outside of this, uh, this industry. I have no background about anything about, about, about auto, auto parts. But I strongly believe the management is the same. There is a management. So there is a management to run the plastic company or petrochemical projects in Indonesia. Same management can work, I, I truly believe, can work in the company in Fuji to making a transmission and going to be global. I can be a manager. I was confident in this sense, yes. Because I experienced many of the positions, I found the management is a common way to do. I learned a lot, this piece is in GE. Tangible, say, material, not a tangible one. So you say, by say accepting, by having such kind of dialogue, I, I, I sense you are gradually increasing the level of confidence with which you can say run the company, even though the company itself engages in a totally different industry. The industry expertise or knowledge can be done by the people who are working, and the management. Is it do the manage manage the people? They grabbing the people, going show the one direction, and try to execute to reach this direction is all the same. Petrochemical industry, plastic industry, everything is same. Even and I I was sure it should work in Japan. Some lessons you have learned in GE days, you said that Bill Connolly's hand was referring to four E's. So one of the four E's was energizing people. Yep. So I just sense that energizing people somehow could be the common safe, not a technique, but a kind of approach yes. to encourage or direct the people to make some mutual goal or common goal for them. People have the power, people have the capability. Mm. But People has always that option, doesn't show the full capability to contribute to the company because they don't need to sometimes. But I am sure each of them are only utilizing the capability to contribute to the company goal, even 20, 30% maximum. Leadership can change this percentage. If the leader can show and ask more help, and if we get the consensus to get more this direction, this 20, 30% can be a 50%. In, yeah. Order, yeah. in order to raise the level, let's say, the 30%, the people are, say, doing the business, whatever, with the level of 30%, but you are really confident to increase the level up to, say, 40%, or at the higher, say, 50%, uh, easy to say, but really hard to do. So my next question would be, is there any specific, say, measures or means or methodology in some cases to, uh, say, effectively energize or encourage, in other words, the people? What's on your mind? Or is there any idea? Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Only the right thing can work. If this direction and this is the area we have to go, you don't. If, if you are not convinced, or if you don't believe what you are saying, people never follow you. So if this is the area, very simple, very straightforward message, but it should be always right. Because you believe it, this is the right thing, and easy to understand and share. So it's, 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 uh, it's about a consensus or a common understanding forward to the target. Then, 
20% turn out to be a 50% going to be a lot of power to go as a group of the people. Yeah, okay, in, in this angle I can answer. We, I haven't achieved anything this. Because I just show the line, one trillion, and this is a line, and this is the area which I have to go. How each of them can, they can reach? I haven't uh, shown uh, anything yet. I think there are various uh, ways to encourage or try to materialize this growth. And as I said, training is the one. And also, the way we try to drive the diversity more could be the probably uh, indirect way to do to support uh, this. And uh, also, school of leadership type of idea to 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 create uh, to appeal each of the employee. They can do that, and they can do more and more as far as they agree with the direction. So there, there might be many ways to do. And I, I try to challenge, and I try to do many things. Like Six Sigma is one. I like to share what is today's immediate challenge by management. I share the managerial challenge. It's not necessary for FAIR, because it is a challenge, management challenge. But I like to expand this discussion to even to the bottom of the organization. And this is a challenge of me. How would you think? And then, I, if I ask for the real end of the, the total organization, if he or she are encouraged to think about that, he or she are already a leader to be a part of solving this problem. That is my me message of the School of Leadership, which I, um, I believe this is a one of the ways to encourage to do this. It sounds like you're trying to say, identify or find one thing now, one or two, a few, say, employees who can cooperate with me or the team to be the small step so that we can, say, make some environment. I need 10,000. <laughs> Is there any, say, signs or signal you can find? Well, this could be the really good talent. So they, they should be really willing to collaborate with me in terms of, say, organizing teams. Is there any signs or any, not the rules, some principle you have in, in identifying this as a nice potential, say, people, or human resources? Yeah, you may assume this type of approach, many organizations, it doesn't work. Because you, you are saying just, Hata-san, you just try to appeal, to ask, to invite for the whole discussion, but many organizations, it doesn't react. Or even very few people can, can, can be willing to participate for, for, this, for this discussion. Or normally, it doesn't work. I, it, it, you sounded like you were saying so. And, and I thought so. It might be a challenge if it didn't work. However, in my sense so far, is this, I'm, I'm lucky. This company, I try to invite many of them. And of course, I pick up uh, talented people, but so far, this 20, 30 percent of the talented people are very well motivated and kind of waited for this kind of approach. So now your next question is, how would you do to expand this 20, 30 selected people back to 50, 60, 70 people? How would you do this? This is a cultural change discussion. Culture can be changed, as I said. Culture can be driven by the selected people, which I strongly learned from GE. If you are selected, you are the leader. And only top 20 people can drive this variable 70 people, which is uh, making a lot of change of the total organization. What happened to the 10 in GE? They call bottom 10. They will never care about bottom 10. <laughs> or they care to cut out. That's a way of GE. I wouldn't say that one, because in front of Shimori-san, I wouldn't say that one. But, <laughs> but, but I am a strong believer of the top 20 can drive to change the culture. And I we pick up top 20, and I have a very good reaction of these people. And I'm very, getting very confident that this company can do that. 
So this big variable 70 is the next challenge. I, 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 I never say I have achieved that yet, but this is the challenge of myself to do this. So first to identify some talented people and try to ignite the heart of these guys, then that fire would gradually expand so that the 70% and last 20% <laughs> ignite the heart. What was your impression at the time, say, back in one and a half ago? Mm -hmm. Impression on JATCO as a company, also JATCO employees. It might be hard for you to explain in front of, say, HR people from JATCO, but uh, just a briefly explain that. You know, I expected many bad things because if you are a part of the uh, team, and all of a sudden the president came from the outside of the industry or the company and said something crazy, do you like to listen to him? I don't. <laughs> I don't believe it. So I, accept, I expected a lot of um, bad thing or I just tend to listen but do nothing type of attitude. I expected, but it didn't happen. Well, I was probably um, not too sensitive. <laughs> but, but honestly, I sense, I felt, everybody uh, listened to me. And everybody uh, looks like uh, waiting for such kind of approach to go to the next direction for this company. Everybody needed as a lead for the direction of the company. This is what I felt. So now, still, I am insensitive probably. But I, I have been insensitive to lead this company since then. In a good sense. Ah, OK. Yeah, yeah. Try to be. I see. I see. <laughs> so you're saying the, the people working for Jacko have been really hungry for that kind of opportunity to be able to give them a kind of opportunity to participate in something. So in that sense, you are lucky. OK, here yeah, that's what you're saying. But still, again, in, in seven years' time, the company itself needs to accomplish the target of the one trillion of revenue. To me, it seems like a big a kind of a gap yes. between the two. Yes. So again, we have to fill this gap mm -hmm. really practically and efficiently. We have some time, for seven years, but still seven years may or may not be long, yep. to be short. Yes. So again, we may have to come up with certain specific, maybe the countermeasure or steps that we need. We have to be really practical in accomplishing this kind of goal. Is there any, say, program or some uh, ideas what's going on internally in JATCO to have these kind of things? So training the people, yes, I understand. Maybe aside from that. We do. Um, from the very beginning to the, up, uh, to the very end, the first, we have to start the very general way, like set the target, the very general. And, and try to make a communication, get a consensus for the target, which is a very general approach. Then, gradually comes to very specific. I show the some approach of the Six Sigma type of thing, which is the arena of the managerial uh, uh, issue to solve. And each half year, pick up three, three themas three topics we, as a management, need to tackle. The first three one is the 5S, information leakage and corporate marketing. And the team, like 15 people, globally, and from very wide range of the people, try to tackle, and within six months, they have kind of a target review and kind of a deploy stage to show a management what is the solution and the very important thing is management need to react practically, tangibly, and we have to do this. So these three topics in each half year is selected by me. Why? Because I like to control the stage of the growth to, to the target. First year, we selected three and three, then six. Next year, and I imagine these three topics are to be flexibly selected to match the stage of the growth towards the target of this company. Mm -hmm. And I imagine this, this, this topic are going to be more practical every year, every year, every year. That, that is my imagination. Who knows? You, you ask me three years later. Then, then, of course, 
the, the more we, 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 we climb, higher we climb, tougher it is going. I'm sure it is. But we have to tackle. Because one trillion end target is a good target we, we can achieve. Three challenging, say, topics mm -hmm. for our goal mm -hmm. in every, say, six months. Yes. You would pick up and present yeah. as a clear message yeah. to the employees. Do you have any pool of ideas, by the way, a predetermined way? Or you would, say, think and go, think and go? I have a pool of the idea, but selecting for this time or mm -hmm. this six months, yes. I need to see more carefully about the situation of this company. Are we mature enough? Are we not mature enough for this topic? I like to select. I, I, I may have to consult with each of the executive how to do this, which is, uh, this is my idea, and so on and so forth. But finally, this is me to select. Bill Connolly's a GE, yeah. as you see, four E's mm -hmm. would be a really crucial, say, keyword anyway, mm -hmm. and en energize or encourage or yeah. what do you think? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ener energy, energize, H yeah. and execute. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, let's say, after you became the president of Japo, you increased, for example, the level of exposure to the media, domestically as well internationally. That's what you have done mm -hmm. by yourself. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you let the opportunity to come up with their own idea to open up the cafes mm -hmm. in your home at headquarters mm -hmm. in Fuji. So in some cases, you're going to do it. In some cases, you will let somebody to do it. Is there any, not a rule or philosophy, a kind of a guidelines? This one should be done by yourself. The other one by somebody else. Is there any, say, something inside you to distinguish between two? Autonomous growth is the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jatoko's status one and a half years ago was not there yet. Mm -hmm. So I like to show, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Firstly, this is something they didn't believe. This is the first time. Cafe by myself? It is, it is a work done by general affairs department or something? Not me, not me. That was... That was the uh, idea, but but I think everybody, any anybody can do, if you like to do, is a message. And firstly, we have to show, and I like to show. Every everything is feasible. Everything can be doable. That that is a message I like to do. And gradually, I hope they started to believe. Without me saying, they started to do something positive. That that, that is the way of the company run. So I also understand it's a kind of a one part of the say school of leadership, mm -hmm. some kind of training. Yes. Let them give them kind of opportunity to come up with their own idea, be proactive, yeah. or change yes. kind of things. The last question could be when you try to say reform the say in this case corporate culture mm. you're concerned about. Mm. So some people may show a kind of resistance. Mm -hmm. to be frank, mm -hmm. especially from the employees having the longer, say, working experience in that company, up here. Mm -hmm. So how can you maybe convince or persuade or change their, say, awareness or conscious to the place that you want them to be? Is there any kind of, a, not a tips, a kind of a approaches, your own approaches to change a kind of a behavior, way of thinking of these people? Let me pick up the way of thinking piece. 49%, 51% salary. <laughs> the company can only survive if the company grows. Company without the growth will never survive. Okay, there is a kind of an industry which never uses any growth, like a traditional um, uh, cake house or uh, small shops, or uh, uh, I don't know, some handicraft shops in Kyoto. You don't need any growth. But if you are in the automotive industry, the growth is a must. Because the, com the, the whole thing is growing, and everybody is competing each other by technology. Without growth, you die. This is the idea. And how do we do this? How do we do this? If you stay 
in this stage, you will die. That is the idea, I need to have a consensus. If 49% people believe, yes, Hatasan, you're right, you have to grow, still, we are not enough. However, only 2% more, 51%, the company is dramatically changing. I experienced it, dramatically changing. The, a little bit more than half of the people started to believe one thought, the company can dra drastically you're really patient. You didn't feel waiting for something. You know I'm a patient Final person. Two percent would tilt to the other side. <laughs> I see. So now I started feel kind of pressure from the audience <laughs> to give me a kind of chance to make raise your hand as me and to make some questions like this. So we still have some thirty minutes to the end. So let's say enjoy the kind of conversation with me. Is there anybody who would have their own questions? So let's maybe as a take it and let Thank you very much for a great lecture and great dialogue to both of you. I have one question from the beginning of, the, of your lecture. Um, I'm very int interested in Jetagol's culture, um, company culture, and um, what is the biggest difference between Jetagol and other companies you experienced? To um, for you to um, well, to in, um, enable you to be people's manager as your uh, ultimate goal. Thank you, thank you for asking. Great question. As I said, Jatoko, the each of the employee I found is a very high level, highly educated, highly motivated, but they are shy. But the most important, more importantly, they do not know they are shy. They are so long term uh, under the Nissan umbrella and very reactive type of the work, never be exposed to the society and never be even test the value of Jatoko technology. And all of a sudden, uh, the outside of, uh, of, of this industry a amateur are coming and say, hey, you guys are good. And they just open up the eye, hey, are we good? This is exactly what happened. They didn't know how good are they. So this is the cultural difference, huh? Okay, now, now I, know that, I, I, know that, I know the challenge. They have to know the clear stance and the existence and the probably the relative view of how Jatoko looks like from the outside of the company. This is what I tried to show them and clearly said to you. First step. Is that answer your question? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm Said Faisal from uh, the full time MBA and I uh, have actually two questions for you, Hatasan. Yeah. Uh, like your customer, uh, Nissan, they have a culture. Uh, that actually led to their production system, uh, Doki Seisan, right? And then uh, Nissan seems to be uh, great and next to Toyota, I would say. So uh, why do you think Mr. Gon wants to actually separate this uh, Jetco and also Nissan into these two separate cultures? Uh, that's uh, separate the cult I mean, a great culture in Nissan. And my second question is, um, uh, as auto automotive suppliers, we all we have customers, and usually uh, we automotive suppliers are actually affected by the customers' culture. So, how do you? Uh, what's your opinion? And how do you actually ensure that uh, you have a strong culture that will uh, that will not be affected by the customer? So, you keep it like separate in a way. So great, great question. question. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Great question. Firstly. Next time you see the Nissan production person, you are next to Toyota, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, you're right, you're right. Uh, there is a history. Nissan actually uh, tried to separate their transmission uh, uh, unit of the business as an independent business to combine with uh, Mitsubishi's one and try to invite Suzuki and probably let them as, a, as an independent business. 
And honestly, this is a very unique setup, which only Nissan did that. And very honestly speaking, Nissan may have thought to sell out this company to the outside, because this is the best setup to sell. But they decided not to, because transmission, they found, is a key of differentiation of the industry. Now, your question is, production culture. Yes, 75% ownership, and more, many people are seconded and then used to work for Nissan. So there is a very, very tight relationship. However, as an independent company, and also uh, together with Mitsubishi culture, which is so different, and somewhat Suzuki culture is another different, so they are mixed up, and they tend to be uh, more like independent. Jatoko tend to learn from Nissan's production system. However, because of the nature difference of the transmission and car itself, there is still uh, some difference exists. I try to respect the difference because the difference is okay. Autonomous, which I said. People are independent. And people are going to be more powerful if they believe independent rather than dependent. I try to encourage them at this independency. The second question is probably very similar. Supplier of the automotive industry are so related with the customer. We are so related with Nissan, yes. Many people are seconded, and also many Jatoko people are now working in Nissan. R&D department is actually existed, existed in Atsugi, Japan, which is a part of Nissan's campus. So, we are so interrelated, but still dependency can actually encourage the true power of the individual. I try to uh, energize or encourage more independency to the each of the Jatoko employees. Anything else? Yeah, no, please, go ahead. Excellent question, excellent question. Now, even for Nissan, knowing that automatic transmission is a key for differentiate to the next generation of the car, Nissan cannot think about the technology difference of the transmission. This is not Nissan, this is Jatoko can create the culture. This is Jatoko can create the future. And we can move actually Nissan's future by our technology. So be proud of being a part of Jatoko and try to lead Nissan, not be, be, be led by Nissan. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I don't like to be here by led by Nissan. Are you satisfied? You like to work with me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the presentation. And I understand your uh, company is uh, so uh, te technology-oriented company. Yes. And yes. so uh, your factory and r and fiction is very important for the purpose. And, uh, but uh, nowadays, uh, uh, your customers uh, go uh, outside of Japan and uh, your plant transfer to the other countries. In these circumstances, how do you keep your technology or innovation or R&D power uh, to uh, reach uh, your uh, purpose uh, in 2018? How, uh, yeah. How yeah. do I keep, how do we keep our R&D yeah. technology? And, uh, I want to know the US uh, R&D uh, strategy. Oh. Mm. That's cool. Very excellent question. You know, I ask, we have, uh, 800 R&D people under Jatoko. And uh, very honestly, the transmission technology is almost all of the technology came to, to Jatoko. Nissan doesn't have any. Of course, there is a configuration. They, they have an engine and, uh, uh, of course, total car manufacturing uh, technology, R&D, R&D. However, if it is a transmission, this is us, Jatoko. So, 
how can we keep the differentiation for the future? Is uh, if I ask today's R&D people, would you like to go out from Atsugi or 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 try to stay here in Japan to uh, polish more uh, your 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 R&D or uh, innovation? Ninety percent of the people today is say, Hatasan, I like to stay here and be in Japan and try to do our job. So don't touch me. <laughs> I, I, I polish my uh, old transmission and try to do a next generation here in Atsugi. They love Atsugi, by the way. But I, my challenge is customer are not necessarily here in Japan. And growing area of the auto industry is out. If you ask me where, it, it can be uh, none of the area which I, we never experienced, like India or Brazil or Russia. If you are not there, how can you just simply imagine the customer's movement? You can simply say the customer of car is same as Japan in Russia, same as in, in, in China. You, I think you, sh you, you, should, you, you should be more humble. You like to see more customer, and you like to be physically closer to the customer. Now my challenge is R&D. Where should we cut the very fundamental R&D work, which is a very basic, patent-oriented, basic engineering? Still, Nissan as well, Mitsubishi as well, it's very still a Japanese-oriented company. And also, government likes to keep, don't go out from the Japan, because this is the employment. But for the application area, which is closer to the customer, you have to go out. Where is the line? I don't know that yet. This is a never-ending discussion with R&D. They still believe I am the amateur. <laughs> I am the amateur, by the way. But one day, before 1918, of course, one day, there is a time we should draw the clear line. We should sit this in Japan and this go out. And me, as an amateur, I'm a driver of kum, and then go. I have to do it. Does it answer your question? Okay, thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Wilson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, my name is Wilson Chan. I'm also in the full-time program. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you were actually just discussing about the uh, globalization of the company. So R&D is one thing that you want to kind of cut and make clear what's in Japan, what's outside of Japan. How about the executive management? As a global company, how is it going to remain Japanese company with only Japanese executives or global executives? Very excellent question. I don't like to answer. <laughs> <laughs> to be very honest, this morning I was uh, executive committee of Nissan. Nissan's executive committee, Mr. Gong, is not Japanese, I, I suppose. And, and let's say, how many members? Let's say 12 members. Uh, Non-Japanese are six, and Japanese are six. So well diversified. All male, by the way. <laughs> Nissan. That's all. 100% Japanese, this. <laughs> and 100% located here. Uh, then I gradually changed, my, uh, changed, changed the shift. I shifted to the North America as one. And, and try to become in one in China. And you know, this global diversification or regional diversification I like to drive. But one thing I'm missing is uh, this diversi uh, diversification of the nationality or even uh, male-female diversity too. When you ask me, I don't know, I just try to start this job, so give me a time. But of course, I, this is the direction I should take. I, I promise you, this is, this is something I have to do. But, you know, they have at least accepted uh, a area. <laughs> so we need to increase uh, non-traditional uh, uh, people in the objective. Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Christina with Christina. the full time program again. And um, as you mentioned in your presentation that 
if you work in a company that's a tenth of the size of one of the larger company, your coverage would be 10 times larger. So as a young professional that about to graduate, we're gonna look for a job, we're trying to strike a change and be the leader in the company. Yeah. Uh, well, of course I wanna work for Jatco. And, but would you recommend an even smaller company? As in, because I think Jatco is a huge company also about 10,000 people, but mm -hmm. there's even larger company, which is like the conventional wisdom, everybody wants to work for a large conglomerate. Would you recommend a smaller company or a large company or a mid-size? What is your suggestion on what, what's the path we should go, what we should go for? You know, picking up the size of the company is not the, probably the best way to choose the company you work for. You know, if you work for GE, for example, GE is such a big company, but you don't feel you are working for the very big company. Why? Because GE is always create a very cluster, handy cluster, the person who are working for is, is this is the company. Like plastic, or well, plastic Japan. And GE is genius to make this arena, is the, the, this is your show, this is your company. And GE is such a small, the, the summation of this small group, handy management type of thing. Which, which, by the way, I think this is a secret of the GE, is actually a school of leadership. They create a lot of leaders. So it's not the size of the company. If the company can provide a lot of authority, responsibility, and growth opportunity, you pick. If you are a very small company, but still you are only polishing the shoes of the president, you, don't, you shouldn't do that. But if you are even part of the very big company, but be a very handful responsibility to grow, you choose it. So that is a clue that you have to choose the company you're working with. Does it answer your question? Example. that you believe that they nurtured the school of leadership? <laughs> <laughs> seriously, seriously. Um, again, again. Um, GE's case, which I, I, I like to follow actually in, the, in this piece. You know, by the way, don't get me wrong. I always talking about GE is a good company. It's not. It's not. Actually, this is so, sometimes, so too much pressurized company. So I, I, I don't necessarily recommend you to work for GE as far as this execution piece. However, the school of leadership we have to respect. I personally have a lot of respect on this one. The first day I joined GE, I was told, hey, Hata-san, uh, you are the manager of this product. Uh, by the way, next month, chairman <laughs> of GE is visiting Japan, and you are supposed to make a presentation to him. And I said, what? <laughs> this is a true story. So you have one month to go and think about your strategy. And by the way, this Mr. Chairman used to be a CEO of the plastic, so he knows plastic very well. Okay. So my, my first month was uh, crazily spent, but I survived. I survived, of course. From his eyes, my presentation is so premature, so childish, I'm sure. However, he finally said, Hata-san, you, you did a great job. You learned a lot by one month. He knew that, he actually he knew that. So it was the first test. So in this case, School of Leadership showed you a steps and tried to, cre uh, to give you an allowance for the growth uh, area. It's, so, so, so this is a way they like to train. And I like Jatoko, it's like the company like this. Okay, thank you, you're welcome. Uh, thank you for a valuable talk, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I have a question about uh, people manager. So at the beginning of the session, you mentioned that uh, you decided to be people manager ah. rather than uh, salary hunter. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to hear uh, why you became to uh, think that way. Was there any 
uh, experience uh, which made you think that, that way? Very excellent question. Thank you very much for asking. Um, that was in China Day in GE. Actually, GE is a major league. Um, good pay. <laughs> and the incentives, you know that. So if you are working in GE, especially in China, you know, the incentive is, is, is such a way. And, and I work with many Chinese colleagues, which is very money conscious. It's OK. And I, my colleague, or I'm a leader of one big team, and the other one is another big team. He's become a bigger, bigger leader uh, next or X years later. So I am still a very good friend. But he is, a, let's say, a person who believes the value of the money. Which is okay. I respect him. I respect him. But the way he tried to pursue the value of the money, always we talk to each other. I don't see the value of the money. You know, please don't get me wrong. I like the money. I like the money. And I really like to be paid more. But end of the day, what makes me happy is that the summation of the bank accounts or the people who used to work for me or work with me are happy and come back with a lecture like this to coming back like him. I think the number of the people who used to work with me growing, this is the final measurement which makes me happy. That's what I found the throughout the various experience. Then I decided my real core of the value be a manager and a career is a people's manager. Does it answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
accepting uh, uh, machines. Very good uh, industrial question. Um, let me try to answer ishimori san <laughs> You know, the, the efficiency rate, uh, if it's a gear to gear, let's say 90x percent, 90, let's say 5 percent uh, of, the, of, the, of, 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 the, of the loss. If it is belt to puri, which is CVT, it cannot come to the 90, more than 90. So it is less efficient, you are right. However, uh, the technology makes this CVT is more efficient in terms of the efficiency is a control. The more flexible control, and this is the computer uh, with this, 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 this thing. So this is a big computer and, and a very flexible, movable uh, shift uh, line makes this as a total efficiency. As it's Toyota and the Koreans, yes. Toyota joined the CBD technology together with Aishin, and Hyundai Powertech is a company which just joined CBD technology. So CBT is gradually growing. By, this is a combination of the mechanical efficiency and the computer technology. My, uh, you have two questions about the Gon's culture. Um, you said everybody under Nissan likes the Gon culture. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Gonsan is a great, great leader, uh, but every company has a history, and that's independency thing. So Nissan also has a many subsidiary which has a different history, and it doesn't necessarily connect it with many things like Gonsan. And Jatoko's case, yes, Jatoko uh, relates to the other culture, and also it's a joint venture. Uh, evangelist of the Mr. Gon's culture, it's a one way I might take as an option, but I don't like. Because this is me. I like to drive, and I like to run by myself, this company. I like to take a good things from Mr. Gong, yes. But still, I like to make this company is better than Nissan. School of leadership. It's never been said in Nissan. I like to make this company is actually, in a sense, better than Nissan. And this is exactly why I am here. And I like to run this company. The session today. Okay. So uh, again, I, in your presentation, I, you referred to several times the school of leadership. Yes. It's a kind of a keyword, also to Globus as well. See, if you can see the kind of a card on the wall, there's a kind of mission. Globus wants to be a business school, which is capable of, say, educating the people, or business leaders, who can create and innovate the society. So business leader is a kind of a goal, you know, say, from our side as well. So in that sense, our uh, last request is that uh, could you deliver some messages, uh, energizing messages to the students in front of us as they are learning at this, say, business, uh, biz the kind of a globus uh, who are creating the business, uh, business leaders. So maybe as, a, as if like a school principal, you may have some uh, messages. Could you finally give them yeah. kind of things? Yeah, thank you very much. The first thing, I congratulate you uh, sit here because uh, you are well motivated. That's why you are here. And you like to grow. That's why you, are, you know, spend the time uh, with me. Thank you very much tonight. I think you are already uh, well qualified for further uh, leadership. Because you are ready to learn more, and you, are, you like to learn more, that's why you're here. So in this sense, I celebrate you uh, be a part of this potential uh, leaders. Leadership doesn't have any good answer. Everybody, and leadership is a style. Every individual has their own way to become a leader. That's why leadership is a style. But you can be a leader, because if you are capable, and also you're still hungry, you're still hungry to learn more, to be a better leader, and you are already be a part of Globus, you will be. That's what I try to say. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.